July 16, 2018, allegedly, according to that thing we call a calendar. And this, indeed, is the Ocelli Effect broadcast live from the facilities of Ocelli.com, also heard on a variety of other networks. Anyway, we welcome you to this moon day or Monday, as it were, depending on how you decide to read that calendar. And this is the day that we continue the series with Jordan Maxwell. It is on religion, and this is part four. Uh, now, certainly, this has been an interesting uh journey and i gotta tell you it's been uh it's been quite fascinating there's even been a couple of things quite honestly that caused me to laugh uh because it, the 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 absurdity built into a certain legends let's call them uh uh just provokes it i'm sorry that's my honest reaction but a great deal of education is uh is here to be gotten by anybody who's deciding to listen and yes indeed we did start about two minutes late so i will dispense with my comments and my commentary very quickly and uh don't worry tomorrow night i will cover more current events and all that kind of stuff so moving forward jordan this is uh part four uh first of all how you feeling tonight uh, I don't know, actually. I haven't felt pretty, I haven't felt too good today, but I, I think I'm all right for the moment. <clears throat> I think it comes with the age. Well, you know, it also comes yeah. with the time, Jordan, because, uh, you know, it, it seems as though everybody that I uh, spoke to, interacted with today was not quite themselves. It almost seems like a, a worldwide event. Uh, uh, from what I can tell, because I spoke to people in more than one country today who seemed to uh, report to me that uh, something odd appeared to be in the atmosphere for them and they weren't quite feeling themselves. Uh, and I, you know, felt that way before I started talking to anybody, but <laughs> I feel like that a lot, quite honestly. Jordan, I... Yeah, me, me too. I feel like that almost all the time now. It's, it's the pressure that's on me. And my age is not able to to you know to fight with it, so I, I pretty much have given up and just live in, in in depression most of my life because of uh, who I am and what I do, and the price I have paid to do it has been just too much, and uh, it has it has really destroyed my joy of living. Uh, <clears throat> but that's who I am. That's what I do. And I can do no other, so I just do what I do and hope that it will be of some value to somebody. Well, look, it has been of great value to many people, uh, and you can go to Jordan. This this is where I drop in to remind people. You go to Jordan Maxwell Show. Dot com because that is the only website that is Jordan Maxwell's. First of all, uh, Jordan Maxwell Show dot com. A link will be included along with this show, this podcast. Uh, wherever I post it, I will make sure to, to provide you a link to it. But also, I want to remind you that you can go over when you go to Jordan Maxwell Show dot com. There is a research society <clears throat> which you can join. Um, there is a lifetime subscription option there, which is well worth the admission price. I want you guys to know that. Um, I've been on the other side of that glass, and I want to tell you that uh, there is a tremendous amount of information there. There's a great deal more being added all the time, and it is not uh, the stuff that you see in public, all of it. There, there is some very interesting things there on a wide variety of subjects. Uh, and any anything that you can imagine that Jordan has talked about is touched upon in the Jordan Maxwell show portion of the uh, of the website sure but you want to go deeper you go into the research society and the cl and the link is very easy to find at jordan maxwell show dot com so uh just want to give you guys that heads up before we go any further i'm sure i'll mention it again but uh jordan you know this series has been rather interesting um we've had a a little bit of repetition because we've had to go back over and cover some of the things that we've uh, covered previously just a bit and uh we've certainly gone into some di directions that um I I I must admit I I never heard before <laughs> especially last mm -hmm. week part 3 was really interesting I mean part 1 we sort of set the table really you did because for the most part I'm going to be rather quiet except uh to interject where I feel it's absolutely necessary here I kind of just want you to run with it but so far uh we've talked about the formation of what people call the Bible. We've talked about the Old Testament versus the New Testament. We've talked about the figure called Moses, according to the story, uh, and his journey up a mountain where uh, God revealed his backside to him, uh, to put it politely. 
<laughs> and you know, and 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 that part of the story again, uh, you, you got to listen to part three for that. But all of the parts uh, have been uh, really fascinating and have linked together nicely. And I will continue to put these out exactly as I have. Uh, the YouTube version will go up right away. Um, and all that, and of course the podcast goes out as soon as I can. I provide some other um, reference links sometimes when Jordan says go look something up. I actually go do it and give you guys some of that, uh, <laughs> give you at least one of those links and uh, show you what he's talking about. Um, now, there was some interesting thing here that, uh, for instance, with the uh, Ten Commandments, I wanted to bring this up really quickly. With the uh, Ten Commandments where you had talked about the... Uh, what was it? The negative. I'm, I'm trying to think of the term now because I've been through so yeah, much. Negative confessions. The negative confessions. Now you said there were 12 negative confessions. I found a reference that stated there were 42. And yeah, yeah. when when I went back and looked at the 42, a lot of redundancy in there. That's um, right. Of course. Yeah. So I, and I showed. That, that's why they, mm -hmm. they 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 dropped it down to 10. The Hebrews or the Jews dropped the. 12 negative or the 42 negative confessions. Uh, that was basically 12 negative confessions from the 42. <clears throat> and they, the Jews dropped that 12 down to 10 negative confessions or 10 commandments. And, uh, and the 10 has to do with the at 10. We talked about the tetragrammaton. Tetra is four, grammar is letters, and Aton was the Egyptian sun god. And so uh, there is something called the At, another way of spelling it is the Aten, T-E-N. And so, you know, you begin to see how the Ten is very important. The Aten was the sun god in Egypt, or the Aton is the same, same word, same god. And so we have an at 10, which is one zero, which is the basis for our digital communication is one and zero is 10. And so the Egyptian god was called the at 10. In, in England, the prime minister lives at number 10, Downing Street. And over the door is the sunburst of the at 10 or the at -ton. And the Jewish God is called the Tetragramma Aton, Tetra being four, Gramma being letters, and the Aton. So the Aten or the Aton, being the sun god of Egypt, dominates the entire planet we're on, period. See, it's the most impressive and most important symbol in mankind's uh, history is the sun. And so when you get into the sun worship of the Aten or the Aton, uh, you will find that the Nazis, the, the Catholic Church, the Vatican, the Christianity, uh, Judaism, Islam, uh, the political movements of the world, both the Communist Party in the Soviet Union, the Nazi Party in Berlin, Germany, the uh, Socialist Parties in England, and all of the uh, accoutrements of power and government with the police department, sheriff's department, military industrial complex, they all over the world use the same symbol, the Aton, the Aten, the sun god. And there's a world of knowledge behind all of that that will, that will really uh, wake you up when you see it for the first time. The swastika representing the Aton or the Aten, and Nazism, the worship of the sun god, and then the connection between the uh, the swastika of Nazi Germany and the Jewish name for God, Tetragramma Aten or Aton, the sun god. Um, my my goodness, is like I said, we could go on making connections between Judaism and Nazism for an hour. Uh, and I've done, and I've, I've got a whole list of these connections. I mean, the, the Jews say that they were a holy people and they did not uh, intermarry with the Gentiles. They were nothing to do with the Gentile people. <clears throat> they were God's chosen people and they were told to have nothing to do with the regular Gentile peoples of the world. Don't have anything to do with them. You intermarry. Same thing with the Nazis. They were a holy priesthood of the of the Aton or the Aten, and the Aten symbol was the swastika. So therefore, the Nazis used the swastika, and they were a holy priesthood. 
They were a holy people. They they counted their importance upon their blood, and they were our blood rituals, and so they would not uh, marry uh, anybody on the outside, and they had nothing to do with the people on the outside. They had a they had a in they had an an inborn system where only the Nazis mess with the Nazis. They don't have anything to do with the people on the outside world. They're all animals to be caught and slaughtered and put into concentration camps. And so there's a lot of connection between uh, the ancient uh, Jewish philosophies coming out of the ancient world and the medieval world, uh, especially medieval Europe, in relation to the modern-day political movements and and then, you know, when you start breaking down the major three religions, you'll find there's a whole world of knowledge you've never about religion, period. And that's what I'm trying to do. Wake people up to the fact that 99% of what you know about religion, it just is not true. And what it's actually based on will blow your mind. So that's what I try and do, wake people up. Well, right. Now, let me let me ask a question at this point, because there's been some feedback on these shows. And uh-huh. uh, I want to uh, voice a collective thing that has come up time and time again uh, regarding the secret societies and their influences on the alleged religions, uh, actually mm-hmm. engineering them. Uh, you see yep. numeric patterns that emerge. And, and you know, when, when people mention secret societies, I mean, the most obvious one that everybody brings up first is the, the Masons, the Freemasons, right? Mm-hmm. But I, I think people don't understand the expansive world of secret societies that have existed and do continue to exist and have exerted and continue to exert uh, influence over these things which we believe are modern religions. And, and I would like to get some commentary on you from that because I want to make a couple of notes here. Uh, some people talk about the Knights Templar as a mm-hmm. past organization. The truth is that does exist today as a secret society, uh, much the same way that there are many of these, you know, uh, uh, you know, patriarchal brother paternal, or, yeah. paternal yeah. organizations. That's what I was looking for, that exact yeah. phrase. Mm-hmm. There are many of them. Some of them, uh, uh, Jordan, appear to be benign. Uh, they, they appear to be, you know, businessmen getting together who just want to pretty much network about business. And yes, indeed, uh, there are a great many people that call themselves Freemasons <clears throat> who are there to do just that. Uh, that's what they do. They interact with one another and they do some charitable works and that is the thing the public they sees. They're the public face of right. it. But, uh, there is another level to this and, uh, people get very lost in the maze of it. And don't quite understand um, that there is a, a mutual language being spoken, it seems to me, through the very powerful secret societies that is a, a language of numbers and mm-hmm. uh, allows them to communicate and uh, cooperate with one another, whether they do it directly or indirectly is a whole other discussion. But I would I would love to hear you talk about the influence of the uh, varying secret societies, past, present, and you know, future, <laughs> as it stands, uh, over religion specifically, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, now, you you said you wanted to know about what, the Zarian? Well, all, secret all of, all, like, in other words, what, what, which ones, because, you know, you, you have the order of the Jesuits, and you have these yep. different orders, and you've mentioned the Jesuits, and you've mentioned some other uh, uh, religious orders, they're called. But yeah, and the Knights Templars, you, you mentioned Knights Templars, right. and that's also Catholic, yeah. Right. Well, certainly. And, I mean, those are the ones I easily recognize, but there's yeah. a lot more that goes into this that has actually um, been the the major influence on, like, the foundation of these religions to begin with, it seems, but also the continuation of the way they behave, the way that they interact internationally. I mean, anything mm-hmm. in general, I would like to talk about the, the, the secret society's influences over them, you know, uh, we know that the Masons have this, you know, idea that you need to believe in a higher power and all that. But uh, it seems as though these organizations that have a desire to dictate to society the way they should behave one way or another and uh, uh, have influence, you know, in the dark uh, also seem to have a great deal of influence over what we call religious organizations, institutions today. And uh, I wanted to talk about, you know, the history of that and how that came to be and 
you know, just go in that direction because people have said oh, that see, we sort see, of left sure. that out so far. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, no, no, I, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Um, there is a there are uh, two or three really important heavy volumes. Uh, they've even broken them down into uh, multiple volumes now. But uh, one of the best books out there, I felt. Uh, was on secret societies, and I haven't, uh, uh, mine have been stolen twice, and I've still got to get another copy, but it's called, there's a, there's a two-volume series on secret societies called uh, Occult Theocracy. Occult meaning hidden. It's just a Latin word meaning something which you can't see. It's hidden, and it's called occult. And theocracy is the study of religions. And so this, this two-volume set you can still get on, on, on Amazon. I think you can. And there's another place I know you can get it. And it's on my website, I'm sure. I've got that on my website, on the research website, because I have uh, a recommended materials. So if you just go on my website, there's a recommended materials on my website, Jordan Maxwell Show. And then there's also in the research society the same thing. I have the recommended materials there also. And so look for the book called uh, Occult Theocracy. And it's a two-volume set, and it's just juicy, filled with all kinds of delightfully dark and juicy subjects about secret societies and who started the, this and that, who started this idea where did the money come to finance them? Uh, how did they? Uh, how did these secret societies found the Baptist Church, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, the Seventh Day Adventists, the Christadelphians, the Worldwide Church of God, all of these different York Right cults and secret societies that we look at today as just different religious beliefs? No, go back and do your homework, and you'll find out all of these different philosophies connected to something called the British Israel World Federation. It goes back into MI5 and MI6 out of England. You've got an incredible array of dark secrets about religions, and especially Protestant religions, where they have come from. And like I said, I named a few, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Seventh-day Adventists, Worldwide Church of God, incredible story about how all of these different uh, uh, operations came to be and who financed them, who started them, where and who who feeds them their information uh, today and their connections uh, and feeding these different religious beliefs uh, coming out of MI5 and MI6 uh, out, of, uh, out of England, secrecy of the British Empire feeding these uh, ideas and belief systems into the religions for the people of the Western world to, uh, to look up and, and believe and uh, never realizing for a moment that all of these different religions uh, that I have named are all being orchestrated out of London, out of England, out of New York. That's why it's called the Empire State, because it's, it's the state of the new world order, a new empire on the earth. And it's an incredible array of information. So, yeah, we could talk about secret societies all day long, but I would suggest you get that. Go on my website and click on the picture, and it will take you to uh, the Amazon where you can order the book, and it's called... Secret societies is, uh, but the name of the book is called Occult Theocracy, meaning occult religions and where they have actually came from. So that's a whole study in itself, and you can, you know, spend a year or two just going through that book and, and do all the research and, and coordinate all your research with other research books on encyclopedias on Freemasonry, encyclopedias on secret societies. And one day you will finally wake up to the fact that this is an entire huge world empire that's been operating behind the scenes for hundreds and hundreds of years that you didn't know anything about and that the people who run these secret societies are actually controlling the Western civilization and, and putting our wars together for us. <clears throat> 
everything we are experiencing in this world today is somebody is putting it together to to move the herd in a particular area, a particular direction. And this is the best way you do it, to move a whole nation to war is with religion, to move a whole nation to elect a certain idea and belief system as their government is done through religion. And, they, and this is why these different religions I talked about are referred to as York Rite cults. goes back to the old Knights of Malta. And the Knights of Malta, Catholic or Masonic orders, finance, organize, and direct all of these different <clears throat> religions today. But most people have no idea about any of this. It doesn't matter because it has nothing to do with basketball or anything important. And so the entire world is being misled by a demonic depravity that's been around for thousands of years, leading the human family to religions, to philosophies, <clears throat> to wars and violence and revolutions. And somebody is sitting at the top of this world watching the human race destroy itself and, and even if it doesn't blow itself off the planet, it will have completely destroyed its foundation for knowledge, for wisdom, for study, for intelligence. And ultimately, one day, this world is going to wake up and find out that we've all been had. I don't care what your religion is. It was all dreamt up by secret societies out of Europe, out of Russia, from China, all around the world. And those secret societies are the same uh, powers on this earth that have given you also the criminal syndicates, mm. the the drug running, the the human trafficking, all of this other organized crime comes out of the secret society. This is one hell of a story. I will guarantee you, when you open up this uh, this this Pandora's box of darkness, it's on the face of the earth, and find out. I don't care what religion you're in. It's all being run by the same dark empire. Mm. So it, it's a, it's an incredible story. No, absolutely. And if you go into the uh, Jordan Maxwell Show Research Society, you know, go to Jordan Maxwell Show and then you go into the Research Society section. Uh, quite honestly, if you were to just click on the link that says, uh, you know, hidden, uh, what, what is it exactly? Now, hidden stuff in religion. You can't get any plainer than that. Uh, it sounds really simple, but when you go into there, you will find the first couple of pages of images and just beginning points for people's research uh, are exactly what has been covered in this series so far. Um, and I'd like to talk about the intermingling of, of symbols here and uh, begin to take you in this direction because here we go, the deception of this is your symbol because it relates to this story. This is something you're supposed to own. This is what people are taught from the pulpits, right? Yep. And mm -hmm. it, it's very interesting to me that uh, images like the, well, let, let's go with the most basic Christian symbol, the cross. Yep. Well, the cross, I, I of course, it's an astrological, uh, you know, it, it's an astrological symbol. Okay, fine. Some yeah, people it, say, but it goes back into the really, really ancient, ancient world. Right. Uh, you, you find crosses uh, on temples in India, which we know to be seven to 8,000, maybe 10,000 years old. And the crosses are obvious. And in Egypt, the crosses were you know, the Christian cross was used all over in the ancient, and I do mean ancient, uh, uh, Egyptian world. And so the cross is the crossing of the four four corners of the earth, north, east, west, and south. <clears throat> and so that's why we get the word we get the word news N E W S from north, east, west, south. Mm -hmm. So anything that happens in the north, east, west, or south is N E W S news. And when you begin to see the, the, the four corners of the cross and the four corners of the earth and the four corners of the universe, north, east, west, and south, and it crosses in the middle, and there's on, this is why you, you will find on churches, you will find a circle on a cross. Almost all Christian churches have, eventually you will find it, usually it's on the churches themselves, is a, a cross with a circle in the middle. And, and the circle in the middle is not a man dying on the cross. It's the sun. The sun is a circle, and it's very bright. 
And so therefore, that represents the light of the world is the sun. Well, that's why Jesus is called God's son, the light of the world. And God's son dies on the cross between north, east, west, and south. And therefore, on the churches today, you always see a round circle on a cross. That's the sun, S-U-N, sun religion. That's why you go to church on sun day, S-U-N day. So sun worship is the bottom line for Nazis, for communists, for Marxist Leninists, for the world so for for uh, for capitalism, communism. All of the different isms are all based on the ancient Sumerian, Babylonian, Egyptian system of sun worship. And today we have all of these different religious orders and religious uh, you know cults. And most of them have come from New York, Upper State New York, uh, from, uh, like Jehovah's Witnesses, and from uh, from Brooklyn. <clears throat> and anybody who lives in, in America should know that Brooklyn is a center for religious bigotry, religious uh, implications of organizations, and mafia, the Cosa Nostra, secret societies. Jewish secret societies. Um, basically, it boils down to the entire world that you live in is a criminal organization, period. Mm -hmm. And just like any, like any cult or any gang, you don't have one gang. You've got a thousand gangs. And they're all vying for power to see which one can make the most money and, and live the highest on the hog off of the poor people who, who finance these organizations I have no idea in the world what they're doing. So my feeling has always been just open up the world to see what the real world of religion really is. Where did the money come from? Who were the people who started these different political and religious movements? And now you're getting into a dark spot that most people don't want to talk about. And, you know, when I was growing up, adults used to tell me, as a kid, I used to hear my adults telling me, well, that's two things we don't talk about now. This is, we don't talk about things like that in polite company, uh, politics and religion. And I always I thought I understood. The reason why we don't talk about politics and religion is because it might offend somebody. That might offend someone. Right. And then I started thinking, well, why the hell not offend them? It's about time somebody offends them. I'll wake them up <laughs> and, tell you, and show you how you're supporting organized crime. You're supporting child prostitution. You're supporting human uh, human dis uh, degradation. He's, you're just supporting world organized crime. And we don't want to talk about that. Well, I'll bet you don't want to talk about that. And and the governments have made sure you don't talk about that. Because that's not something we talk about, so that's uh, not politically correct to talk about it. Why? Because the government is organized crime. It's a mafiosi operation. We call the United States government. It's an organized criminal society, period. At the end of the day, that's the bottom line. And they are behind all of these religious movements, political movements. Organized crime is behind the drug trafficking. And where's the drug? We're told the drugs are coming from south of the border, from Mexico, from, uh, from Colombia. All of those countries down there are Catholic countries, Vatican-run. Vatican-run Catholic countries are flooding the world with, uh, with narcotics in Chicago. My God, Chicago is, is a world capital that most people who are intelligent, who can read and have, and have woke up, realize Chicago is a center for organized crime. Back before the days of, of Al Capone, Chicago was a den of thieves and, and organized criminality. And out of uh, out of Chicago has come so many different religions and religious people and, and, and important uh, figures in politics and Obama and all the rest of the Obama organized organization. You go back into the history. Go back and do some reading 
about the history of Chicago in the 30s, 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, where Chicago was understood to be the criminal capital of America, period. It rivaled New York and the New York families. Chicago was a center of organized crime, which has given us Obama and the Democratic Party. And all you got to do is go on the web and type in Democratic Party and Mafia and watch and see how many articles came, come up showing you that the Democratic Party was in business with the underworld, with the, with the uh, uh, organized criminal establishments in the Midwest. Everybody remembers back in the 40s remembers that the Democratic Party was, a, was involved all the time. You would read it in the newspaper, the Democratic Party, party or a Democratic uh, guy running for Congress was found to have business and uh, doing business with the mob, uh, ass uh, assassinations, killings, bloodletting. It's all criminality, period. At the end of the day, you're going to wake up and find out this whole world is lying in the power of the devil. It's lying in the power of the evil one, the Bible says. The scripture says the entire world is worshiping demons. And all over the earth, we're killing each other. And wars and violence. And we talk about how holy we are and how big our churches are. And yet we're still fighting wars over the same old stuff. It never changes. And the reason why is because we don't change. We're always the same. The more we change, the more we stay the same. And it appears to have been designed that way, Jordan. That, that, that's the interesting thing. See, long before there was this experiment that we call the United States or United States of America or whatever the corporate name is for it right now, uh, uh, quite honestly, I, I think there might even be a corporate entity that is uh, overseeing things that we don't know about just yet because I haven't seen the papers. Uh, but <laughs> that's right. <laughs> let's, let's get down to it. Uh, it seems as though this has all been engineered because long before, this stuff was going on somebody constructed these interesting tales now we we had a discussion about how uh the the literal figure of jesus christ as most people speak of him and about him um well seems to have been fabricated from previously existing stories and um symbolism now, why do I say that? Yep, yep. Uh, even even people would say, well, look, he was the one who was crucified on the cross. And OK, let me stop you there, because <laughs> um, pre long before, way, way long before there was this story, long before this historical figure that allegedly even existed, there were saviors on crosses in many different religious beliefs. Um and the the the, the pagans was. had one. The, the 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 pagans had yep. one that I recognize easily. I know that there's images of a South American um, religious figures That's who right. were also put on crosses. But this is not the only two places where this existed. The idea of crucifixion and the symbol of the cross. Again, like you said, you can find it in the Hindu religion. But I mean, right there, just that symbol alone. And then people say, well, he was the living God who was resurrected in the story. Okay, I understand your story, but do you know that that existed long before the historical figure was even allegedly born? Now, what I find fascinating is that a true believer sometimes when confronted with this, and you say, listen, it's not that I don't believe, because there's a great deal of truth in what it is that you're speaking about. You know, the, the ideals, the concepts are all wonderful things that you're talking about. But do you yep. not understand that there's these things missing? And you know what they say to you sometimes, Jordan, is that somehow or other, you know, it's like, look, the devil is capable of time travel, apparently. And what he's done is gone back and laid these things in the past to dissuade the true believers now from understanding the truth. And uh, yep. have you ever heard this before? And, and you know... Oh, my God, I hear it all the time. And it's the sorriest excuse that I think I have ever heard is to tell me that the devil knew that Jesus was going to do all these things. So he had all these different religions uh, uh, come before and do the same identical thing. And therefore, when Jesus comes along, now we will say that uh, Jesus was, the, the story of Jesus was just copying all these other 
religions. And so the devil has fooled everybody because he's the one who put all these ancient religions together knowing that Jesus was going to come and do the same thing. Well, that's the same idea that, uh, you know, back in the 1500s, somebody wrote an incredibly interesting novel, fascinating, and it was a big seller. And then a couple of hundred years later, everybody has forgotten about it, and somebody found a copy of it, and they rewrote it and put their name on it, and it became a big seller because it was a sensational story. And that was in the 16 or 17 hundreds. Then maybe a couple of hundred years later, it all died out and everyone forgot. And then in the 19th century, somebody happened to come across that document and they rewrote the story and put their name on it. And then it became a big seller again. And and then, well, you know, it died out. And then in the 20th century, uh, it comes out again. We call it a new name, a new name, but it's the same old story. And today, and so when you confront the author today and say, well, this is just plagiarizing something that's been written five or six hundred years ago. It's been written about ten different times. And this is the same story. He will tell you, no, 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 no. Everybody knew that I was going to write this book and it was going to be a big seller. I'm going to make a lot of money on it. They're going to make a movie out of it. And so all of these people knew that I was going to be famous and write so oh, that's why they, uh, you know, put the story out there that they wrote it. But the point is, is I wrote it. I just wrote it brand new. But all of these others knew I was going to do that, and so they put it out first to make me look like I'm plagiarizing. No, it's not making you look like plagiarizing. You are plagiarizing, period. And so I don't care how you explain it away to the people who are a very low IQ, but I've been around the world. I know what plagiarism is. And when I can see it retold seven or eight times in the past 800 years, and here it is again brand new, I know what plagiarism is. I know that you copied it from somewhere. So most people will use all these silly, nonsensical, uh, you know, Ways to get out of the fact that, no, you just copied something that's been copied in. And the reason why they do that is because they've given their life to that idea. They've given their life to the story of, of the Messiah who died. And so they've been preaching that to other people. And they've been telling other people how they're ignorant and ill-informed and don't know the real story. And so now they have committed themselves and their whole life and their wife and their children and their family and their whole family's family, uh, everybody is committed to that story. Now it comes out for the first time uh, again that this is nothing more than just a copied story from something else a long time ago. And now that person who's given his whole life to that idea and proselytizing and preaching it everywhere, he now has to justify uh, how he believes it to be absolutely true. So come up with some kind of a corny, a goofy uh, reason why uh, this is telling us. Because if not, then it's going to look like you're a fool and you bought into something that you know, has been around for a thousand years before you were born. And now everyone's going to laugh at you because you bought into it. You were the apostle uh, proselytizing this story and now you're going to have to make you're going to have to defend your belief so come up with some kind of a half crank half uh, goofy answer as to how you happen to be believing something that has been, uh, been told before and that's why the Bible is called the greatest story ever told it's not the greatest collection of historical facts the greatest story that's a whole story in itself. Where did this story come from about a man named Jesus who died on a cross? Because the first 200, or fact, no, it was the first 600 years of Christianity, there was no man on a cross in Christianity. Go back into the history books, go back encyclopedias, and you will find that for the first 600 years of Christianity, there was no man on a cross, period. They never understood uh, Christianity to be a man who, whose name was Jesus who died on a cross. That came uh, after a certain uh, church councils in Europe decided that they needed to put a man on the cross and make it more personal to humans. 
And so if, when you read that, you see that, well, well, for the first 600 years of Christianity, there was, there was no man on a cross. They didn't even know what you're talking about. So I'm just saying if you want to do some homework and do some research and, and academically go back and prove what it is you believe, you will of all the wonderful things that you know are just not true. Period. Mm. Oh, that's absolutely true. Even even when you uh, opened up, uh, you know, beginning this discussion here, when you discussed the word occult, uh, I think a lot of people don't recognize the uh, the bit of wordplay in there. Uh, yes, yep. indeed, it does link to the, the Latin word for hidden, but what does it actually mean? It's actually hidden from the eye. See, Occult, O-C, like that, is usually a prefix for things that have to do with the eye. And we uh, see... Ocula. Ocula. Of course. Yeah. So... Ocula. And I think a lot of people forget now, now the, re the only reason why I know this is because I researched my own name. <laughs> okay. Yep. And, uh, if you look at, uh, Ocelli, it's, uh, it, it basically refers to the eye formation in a, in a peacock's feathers is where it came from. That's where the name comes from. But the Latin base for it is based on this reference to the eye and yep. the eye symbolism. Right, uh, is yep. everywhere. It is, uh, you, you're looking, it's, you know. It, that's the basis for sun worship. Right. Sun worship is uh, because the ancient peoples looked at the sun, and to us on the earth, the sun is a perfect, flawless, round circle. And so that's why they, they understood the sun, was, uh, whoever, it was an eye in heaven, and the perfectly round eye. And heaven is watching you. So God is watching you all the time. Know the circle, like the circle of your eye, is perfectly round. And and so, therefore, if you are, are following God's uh, uh, advice, if you're following the teachings about God's Son, then you will be his pupil. This is a term which you use for the eye, a pupil in the eye. And so you are a pupil of following God's son's teaching. And so God is in heaven. He's up in heaven. Well, of course the son's in heaven. Where the hell else would it be if it's not in heaven? And so when you die, you're going to go to heaven to be with God's son. No, when you die, you're going into the ground. You're not going into heaven. The son is in heaven, S-U-N, not God's S-O-N. And so the whole of Christianity is based on the old, uh, uh, the old religion of, um, Hindu. India. India Hindu gave us today what we call Judaism and Christianity. It's a Hindu religion. Mm. And incidentally, when you get into the Hindu religion, you will then find <clears throat> there's some excellent books or research books on the subject, encyclopedias of dictionaries of, of Bible and, and religion, and they will show you all conclusive evidence that the whole idea of the Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam all rant and rave all day long about how they, uh, Abraham was their father. Abraham was, their, was, their, was the father of their religion. They're called the Abrahamic religions. Well, first of all, his name was not Abraham. It was Abram, A-B-R-A-M. <clears throat> Look it up in the book of Genesis. You will see uh, there was a man called Abram, A-B-R-A-M. A-B in Hebrew is Ab, which is your father, which is an ancient word in the Middle East for father, Ab. And so Ram, R-A-M, was the symbol for the god in Egypt of Ares. Ares, the ram, one of the constellations of the zodiac. And so the ancient religions were based on the Zodiac ram, and so they became known, uh, the, you know, the leader of that ancient religion of, of astrology was Abram, Ab Ram, Father Ram, <clears throat> and he changed his name to Abraham, and therefore, we now know Abraham comes from the Indian, an Indian religion of called Brahma. <clears throat> the Brahmins will tell you in India today, they are referred to as God's chosen people. They are the true followers of the original God, the Ram God. The Ram God <clears throat> is a Ram 
a goat, and that's why the, you know, today the Jews blow the ram's horn, a shofar. It's a symbol of the ram. And so in, in India today, you have the Brahmins. <clears throat> you put an A in front of Brahman, it becomes Abrahman. And Abrahman becomes Abraham. Abraham, Abraham has, uh, and, and the Brahmins will tell you, any, in, uh, any dictionary will tell you that the Brahmins today are God's chosen people in, in India. They don't have anything to do with the untouchables. They don't have nothing to do with the common people, the common people of India. They are, uh, they are Brahmins and they are holy. And they know the Lord and, and the rest of the people can go to hell because they are the chosen people of God. Well, where have we heard that? Abraham. And so then you find out, no, oh, there was no Abraham. There was, and today the Brahmins will tell you that there's a very important goddess connected to the Brahmin religion and her name is Sarah Swazi. Sarah Swazi is a goddess of a river in, in India <clears throat> that the Abrahamic, uh, holy people of God uh, had a had a whole connection to <clears throat> the the goddess uh, Sarah. Her name was Sarah Swazi, and so now you have in India Abram or Abraham and Sarah. There was no Abraham and Sarah. There's an Abrahamic religion which is Ab Ram, the worship of the Ram, blowing the shofar, <clears throat> and Sarah is Sarah Swazi, a goddess in India. You know, since we're on to this, uh, this part, this is a here. whole story. Yeah, since we're on to this part, Say it again. You, well, since we're on to this part where, where you've mentioned this and, and we've gone over this before, I want to go a little further uh, because we we wound okay. up talking about uh, also uh, you know the, the the word Christ and Christo and oil, all that. Um, one thing I think that we missed in that because I, I I like going back over these things and making sure we didn't miss anything is. Uh, you know, it, it occurs to me that Krishna is also uh, an interesting name, um, especially given, once again, uh, since I was talking about the reference of others being placed upon a cross, um, gee, it does appear to me as though there is imagery of Krishna upon a cross, and this predates Christianity. And, you know, it's kind of interesting that Krishna sounds quite a bit like Christ, uh, you know, it's Chris and Chris. I, I wonder, um, you know, I wouldn't, I wonder if that's you wouldn't elaborate on from. that. Well, that's where the word Christ comes from. Chris, like I said, uh, Pillsbury has got a, a cooking oil named Crisco. Crisco is not Crisco, it's Christo, in a Greek word. And in Latin and in English, we call it Crisco. You go to the market and get some Crisco cooking oil. Why? Because Christo is actually Christo. And Christo in Greek means an oil. An oil of what? An oil to anoint you. Because in the ancient Greek and Roman and, and, uh, and the so-called Egyptian and, and Indian religion, they still today in India, they pour white milk or white cream on the, uh, on the, of, of, uh, uh, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, and Shiva's phallic. There's a, there's a, I don't know if you've ever seen it or not, but just go on the web uh, and look up Shiva's phallic. It's a phallic stone meaning the erection of Shiva, the God who creates. And so he creates with his uh, male erection. And today, the women, men and women, especially the young women, poor white cream and white milk over the top of this male phallic image. And so you don't have to be a scientist to figure out what that's all about. And so, uh, you know, the, the worship of Shiva was Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, the three gods in India, uh, corresponds with Osiris, Isis, Horus in, in, uh, in, in Egypt, uh, Father, Son, and Holy and Christianity. And then you've got Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in, in Judaism. All of these are all triune gods. It's all connected to Hinduism. It's all connected to sex worship. Uh, and therefore, Jesus Christ, Christ meaning oil of anointing. And what do you talk about anointing? Well, look up the word anointing. It has to do with sex. And so the male would, uh, would lubricate his, uh, uh, the male erection before sex in the ancient and prehistoric and ancient world. 
And so it was called anointing his erection. And so today we, uh, and the king and queen of England is anointed. They will take, and take a silver spoon and they dip it into a big bowl, a silver that has oil, Christos, oil, and they will pour it on the queen's head, or on Prince Charles's head. And at that point, he has now become anointed, the king of the anointed queen. Anointing is simply putting the oil in the head of a phallic before sex. That's where it all comes from, anointment and, and the phallic worship, penis worship, sex worship. Uh, it's an extraordinary story, as I've said many times before, that people are totally unaware of. All of this holiness you see in England with the queen being uh, anointed queen of England, it's all sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Nothing holy about it. Well, that's, that's talking the, about the queen being anointed yeah. with a holy phallic. Well, you see, now that's the interesting part of all this as we get toward uh, where, where we're going to take a break here. Um, to me, what I see reoccurring is this constant uh, all-seeing eye. Okay, yep. uh, and and it's not only just in the religious organizations being represented in one way or another in these different circles and the sun and all of that, but the all-seeing eye and sex. These are the uh, the two reoccurring themes, no matter what, no matter what it's plagiarized from, no matter what it's a composite of, no matter what it's meant to symbolize, no matter what culture uh, propagated it first, last, or, you know, currently, it doesn't matter. It all seems to be about sex and the all-seeing eye. Um, and, you know, this is what I boil and the all-seeing eye is the sun. It's the all-seeing eye is the sun. And the bottom line is... No matter how you cut it up, the two things which represent life in the universe is our sun and sex. Mm. Without the sun, there is no life, and without sex, there is no there is no life. Well, see, and so, that's why. Period. I, that's the bottom line. And that's why I argue, you know, the the, the simplistic version of sun worship. Uh, as it's presented by some, you know, anthropologists and archaeologists and things, uh, makes sense to me because it is a life giver. It puts light, you know, out as far as people are concerned. When it's there, you can see what is in front of you. In the darkness, there is danger. So it, it does make sense That's to me right. that ancient people who had no other recourse as to how to interpret their reality would have worshipped the sun, um, but uh, but people scoff at it as if it is you know some sort of a, a lost you know thing it's like you know well at one point we uh you know killed uh killed our uh, uh prey to eat by uh, smashing them with rocks you know look at how uh savage we were but the truth is when you uh, when you're done undressing this whole thing it's still sun worship and it's still about <laughs> sex and life and the sun i mean it, it, you know you dress it up 80 different ways and you give it a lot of different names but i mean am i am i looking at this too uh, too harshly? No, 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 you're exactly right. No, we're looking at exactly correct the way it was actually happened. And that's why today we have uh, ideas in Christianity that, uh, that it was God's Son and He was the light of the world. Well, of course the Son is the light of the world. Yeah, but He was our risen Savior. Well, that's what we say. It's called sunrise. He's risen. So uh, he rises every morning, about 5.30 in the morning, he rises. And thank God he rises, because he is your risen Savior. If that sun doesn't rise, the earth is going to be dead in three weeks. will be solid ice and dead, gone. No food to eat, no light, no, no energy coming in. We will all be dead within a month. And so, therefore, it is your risen Savior. Yeah, but he had 12 helpers. That's right, 12 months of the year, the 12 signs of the And he died, he died so that you might live. That's right, because the Egyptians said the sun is pure energy. And if he kept all of his energy to himself, uh, he would live forever because it was pure energy. But he gives his energy to everybody freely. So he just shares his energy with everybody. So one day he's going to die because he's giving it all away. So the Egyptians said God's son died so that you might live. Because if you don't get some of his energy, you're not going to be around very long. You're going to be dead. The whole earth will. So God's son died so that you might live. 
Right. So when you start breaking it down, it it all becomes overwhelmingly obviously stories uh, based on astrology, based on sex, realism of of how life really operates. You know, we're told told that Jesus walked on water. I grew up knowing that you go out to the ocean, it's 545 in the evening, just before the sun drops down below the surface, and you will see the sun appearing to you that it's sitting right on the ocean. It's not going under and it's not going above it. It's sitting on the ocean. So God's sun is the light of the world, and he's walking on water. And as I said, the next point was that uh, <clears throat> Mother Earth, the Earth is called our Mother, Mother Nature, Mother Earth. And she asked God's Son to, to go out and get the water and bring it in and make water into wine for the marriage feast of Cana. Well, that's what happens. The sun does go out and evaporates water, turns it into clouds. The clouds break uh, break loose with the uh, with, uh, rain. Down it rains on the grapes. The grapes make wine, so the God's son has turned uh, water into wine. All of these stories have been known to the ancient peoples. There's just ideas, fairy tales, just you know stories that are told from the adults to children, and from children grow up and they're adults and they tell children. <clears throat> they're still telling the children today, <clears throat> and we're still the children believing it. Well, that's the, that's exactly where, where it is, is when you boil it all down, you can make sense of this, but, uh, you, you kind of have to stop taking things so literally. Looks like to me, uh, you know, take a look at the literal meaning of it, break it back down, and you understand that these things have their roots elsewhere. And, and in the places, quite that's honestly, right. that they discourage you from looking at. <laughs> right? But we're going to continue yep. this discussion in the next HL hour with Jordan Maxwell. Now, this is part four with Jordan Maxwell on religion in general. Now, hold on to yourselves because we, we did wrap around and cover and uh, deal with a couple of maybe unleft turned stones in the first hour. But uh, in this hour, I'm going to turn it over to Jordan and he's going to talk about something that uh, he has not discussed discussed before and uh, you might want to take notes or make sure that you save this particular episode uh, especially I mean I advise you save the whole series but this particular episode is going to be an interesting jumping off point into something you have not heard before so now I've given you that warning also uh, if you go over to Jordan Maxwell show.com that is the only website for Jordan Maxwell that is actually his, jordanmaxwellshow.com. Uh, if you go into the research society and you become a member over there, uh, a lot of this material is, uh, is, is expressly covered over there quite well. But, uh, but believe it, this is, uh, an interesting series and, uh, I'm extremely happy that Jordan is doing this with us. So, that's all I gotta say about all of that. And, uh, you know, Jordan, we, we, covered and recovered a few things in the first hour um, and filled in a few gaps as far as I'm concerned and I think it's uh, it's time to uh, go into this other direction and I'm anxiously awaiting like anybody else who's listening to this to uh, to hear where we're going so uh, without any further ado I turn it over to you okay well thank you very much Chuck <clears throat> uh, what I'd like to talk about right now is something that I consider it to be one of the most important subjects on the earth today <clears throat> in the world of religion. And that is, what does it mean and where did it come from? And what are you talking about? The subject is the kingdom of God. All the churches talk about the kingdom of God. The Christians talk about God's kingdom. And, uh, and and we're hearing from the uh, Islamic world, you know, the kingdom of Allah, God's kingdom in the heaven. And so we've heard about the God's kingdom and the kingdom of God for ad nauseum for years. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you what the kingdom of God actually is. And I don't care what you think about it. It doesn't matter what you think. If you do the homework, like I have for 60 years, live in libraries and read and study, photocopy documents, talk with all the experts, do the research, over a period of many, many years, it will finally, finally dawn on you 
what the word kingdom of God really is. <clears throat> and there's a lot of interesting stuff that you've never thought about. I have problems with my lungs, as you can probably tell, and I have to cough, and I'm sorry about that. But I've had a very bad situation with my lungs and my heart. <clears throat> and I may not be here much longer because of it. But anyway, I do want to lay this one out for you and break it down for you. For the first time, understand when you hear the word God's kingdom <clears throat> or the kingdom of God, what does it actually mean? First of all, the word kingdom of God are words that we humans come up with. <clears throat> it's not chiseled in stone in heaven. It's something we use. It's something adults come up with. We call it God's kingdom. Well, first of all, you have to understand, as I said, these are human words, all right? In our human society, <clears throat> we put things into categories. And so we put different life forms into categories. Uh, we, we talk about cattle or in herds. So when you people talk about herds, uh, people think about cattle or in herds. Uh, bees are in swarms. Uh, fish are in schools. Uh, owls are in parliaments. Uh, <clears throat> but what kind of life form on the earth? Uh, I could go on for, for an hour just naming off all the different kinds of life forms and the term we have for the general subject of that life, particular life form. Right, like crows are in murders. Exactly. Yeah. So what is it on this earth that we humans all agree is in a kingdom? Hmm? Think about it. What is it that we humans, when we talk about the, uh, uh, the answer, in, uh, answer in hills and ant hills and Fish are in schools, and uh, and uh, cattle are in are in herds, and uh, there's a lot more stuff, but I can't remember all of it. Is that what is it that we humans all agree upon? Uh, anywhere in the world you go, they will agree upon, agreed upon that this particular life form is in a kingdom. What kind of animal? Or what kind of life form is in a uh, is in a kingdom? Have you ever thought about that? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, a couple of thoughts I have there. First, uh, you know, it usually means that there is a king atop the structure of the organization. Uh, that's, you know, I mean, obvious. I know I'm being Mr. <laughs> obvious here. But there is a king, right? And uh, sometimes there are descriptions like the animal kingdom uh, where there's a hierarchy. Precisely. Um, Precisely. It's an animal Animals are what we humans say are in a kingdom. The fish are in schools, you know, and, and uh, cattle are in herds, and you know we can go down the line and name up all the other kind of life forms and what they what we call them and uh, the, collectively. But it is it is the animals which we say are in a kingdom. Okay, now. The animals are in a kingdom, the kingdom of animals. Now, where do you find animals? Animals are related to, in the ancient Greek, and I do mean ancient Greek. The ancient Greeks put the call the animals, uh, a place connected to animals is called a zoo. So that's where you have the animals are in a zoo. And so if you're going to go study the animals, you go to a zoo. All the different animals are there at one place, and it's called a zoo, from which, you get, from which we get the word zoodiac or a zodiac. The zodiac, look it up in a Webster's Dictionary, look up the words, and the word zodiac in a dictionary, anybody can do that. Just open up a dictionary and look up the word. It's on the Z, zodiac. And it will tell you it's the kingdom of animals because the zodiac is a bunch of animals. Uh, and, uh, and the symbols in the, in the zodiac are symbols of animals, okay? <clears throat> this is where we get the word zoo and, and zodiac is from a zoo. 
And so the zoo is God's kingdom of animals. And the kingdom of animals is the zoo, the act, or the zodiac. So now for the first time, understand that when you say God's kingdom, you're talking about the zodiac. Because where is God's kingdom? Well, it's in heaven. You bet your life it's in heaven. It's not here on the earth, it's in heaven. And then Jesus says, when you pray, we call it today, we say it's the Lord's Prayer. No, it's not the Lord's Prayer. That's a that's an incorrect term. The Lord told you when you pray, not me as the Lord, but when you pray, you pray this way. So it's not the Lord's Prayer. It's the prayer the Lord told you to pray. And so he said, when you pray, you say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And here it comes. Let thy kingdom come, and let thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. And so what you're saying in Christianity, if you go back and do the research on ancient Christianity, you will see that the ancient Christians held the zodiac to be the symbol for God's kingdom, the kingdom of the zodiac or the kingdom of the zoo animals. The animals of the zoo are zodiac. And so, therefore, analyze what you're saying when you're praying the Father prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, yes, is in heaven, not here on the earth, and hallowed be thy name, let thy kingdom come. What kingdom? The kingdom of animals. The zodiac. The zodiac. Oh, that's why Jesus had 12 apostles. Because he had 12 apostles. Why? Because there are 12 signs of the zodiac. There are 12 months in the year. And if you look at that uh, picture that was painted of the Last Supper, that shows Jesus sitting in the middle of 12 uh, people dinner with him. It's called the Last Supper, the Last Passover meal. And to Jesus' right, if you'll see the picture, go on the, go on the web and look at the picture of the Last Supper, a very famous painting. You will see on his right, next to him on his right, first of all, there are 12 apostles. But they are divided into threes. There are three apostles talking with each other. Then there are three more talking with each other. Then there's Jesus in the middle. And there's two more uh, groups of three talking to each other. So there's actually four different groups of three apostles each, which makes four times three is twelve. Which is actually telling you that God's Son, the light of the world, is between the 12 signs of the zodiac. Whereas well, I said, on the right-hand side of Jesus in the picture of the Last Supper is a woman. Go back and see it. It's a woman. What is a woman doing there with the 12 apostles? Well, look at the painting. The artist who painted the painting was not stupid. He made it into a woman. Why is one of the twelve apostles a woman? Simple, because one of the twelve signs of the zodiac is is a Virgo, Virgo the Virgin. And so this is why she sits at his right hand. She's the Virgin. And so Jesus was born of a Virgin. No, the son was born of Virgo, the constellation of Virgo, the Virgin, the Holy Mother. And this is why... Catholic Church is into the Holy Mother, and her her name was Mary, M A R Y, Mary, the Mother of. No, incorrect. Go back and do your homework. You made a mistake. It's not M A R Y, Mary. It's M A R I, Mari. Mari is a is an ancient word which means pure. Anything which is absolutely pure. If you get a, a highly highly. Uh, Filtered water, we call it Mari water, because it's very pure water. So the word pure was M-A-R-I, Mari, not Mary. And so today we know that the virgin is a, is a word for a woman uh, that's never had sex with a man, so she's pure. 
And so her name was Mari. No, Mary. No, Mari. And so Jesus has an apostle sitting next to him on his right, which is a woman, which represents one of the 12 signs of the zodiac, Virgo, the virgin. And so you begin to see that the 12 signs of the zodiac, you're saying to God, let your kingdom come and let your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Well, it, you, you, it's just that you are acquiescing to and you are agreeing to God to let his will be done on the earth. Let your kingdom come and your will be done. What are you talking about your will be done? Because each one of those 12 signs of the zodiac dominate earth and the solar system and our world, our human world is dominated by the 12 signs of the zodiac. And each sign of the zodiac is 2,150 years long. And so if you go on the equator and look eastward at the equator, you will see the sun come up in the east. And when it rises in the morning at the equator, you will see there's a group of stars that the sun is rising in front of. And each one of those, uh, every 2,150 years, there's a different set of stars at the equator looking east you will see a different set of stars. And the sun is rising in those set of stars. So as, if it's rising in Taurus, we say the sun is a, is a, is a golden calf. But the Hebrews worship the golden calf, golden for the sun, and the calf for Taurus, the bull. Then later on, we have the Jews blowing the ram's horn. And so the, what's the next sign of the zodiac? Aries, the ram. So now we have the ram god, Abram, Abram. And so the Jews blow the ram's horn. Now what's the next sign of the zodiac? Well, the next one is, uh, is uh, Pisces, the two fish. Well, we say that Jesus was the great fisherman. He was a great fisherman. And he fed his crowd, the Bible says in Luke. He fed the people who followed him with two fish. Two fish, what is the symbol of Pisces? Oh, it's two fish. Oh, so now we see that Jesus is God's son, and he's officiating life on the earth and in the universe in the signs of the zodiac. Well, what's the next sign after the two fish? Because that's where we are today. We're living in the age of Pisces, the two fish. And as, and I will remind you that in Jerusalem, about 10 years ago, uh, the, the, the Israeli government was going to build a new wing onto a prison in this area called Megiddo. Go on the web and talk uh, to church, and you will see that the, uh, Israel was going to build a new uh, wing onto a prison in Megiddo, and so they sent out the uh, the people to drill down and cut down into the ground and prepare to lay the concrete and prepare to lay the foundation for the new floor. And But when they were dig, digging down, they hit the floor that's already there. And it was in the news that the Israel d discovered, and, the, and what they said is Israel has discovered the single oldest Christian church ever built on the earth, period, end of sentence. The single oldest church ever built in this world, uh, Christian church, was found in Megiddo in, in, uh, in Israel. And they show you pictures of the, of the floor that these construction workers found when they were digging down to lay a foundation. And what is in the middle of that floor is a huge, big mos uh, mosaic floor. And in the middle of that floor, a large, large mosaic uh, of two fish going opposite directions. That's the two fish of Pisces. And Israel, America, England, all the big shots that know everything about everything, they said that was the oldest single Christian church ever found on the earth ever. And what was on the middle of the floor? Two fish. What did the two fish there? Well, Jesus said he, he fed the he fed the multitude with two fish. The two fish are the two fish of Pisces. 
the astrological, one of the twelve signs of the zodiac, one of the twelve apostles of Christ. And so the bottom line here today that we still are in the age of Pisces, but we're coming to the end of it. This is 2118, 2018. So we are 2,000 years into the 2,150 years of Pisces. But we've already got through the first 2,000 years. So there's only 150 years left. And out of that, we've already gone through 18. So now we're, we're getting, you know, we're getting close, relatively speaking. We're getting close to the end. So that's why the Christian church today is preaching throughout the world. These are the time of the end. This is the end time. These are the last days. The last days are the end times. And it's going to be horrible, terrible things coming because it's the end times and the last days. The last days of what? The last days of the age of Pisces, the two fish. And that's why Moses was telling the, the, the Jewish, the Israel, uh, you know, in the story, Moses is trying to tell Israel that I'm going up to get a new commandment, the new, the new commandment, which will start a new religion. And he comes down and he sees the Israel still worshiping the golden calf, golden sun, calf, Taurus. So the sun is in the age of Taurus. And Moses comes down and says, no, God said there's going to be a new age, a new, a whole new way to worship me. And from now on, you're going to have to blow a ram's horn. And it's going to be the age of the ram, Aries, the ram. And so the Jews told Moses, no, we're going to stick with what we know. We've, we've always worshipped God as a golden calf. And so we don't care about this new thing that you're talking about. So that's all that new age bull, bull crap of your new age. We don't, we're not interested in your new age. Well, God's will is going to come on the earth whether you like it or not and so you ask God let your kingdom come and your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven well in heaven we were Moses said in heaven uh, God changing the arrangement now from the golden calf the sun in Taurus to now we're going to have a new sun uh, for 2,150 years, it's going to be in the age of Aries, the ram, the ram god, Abram, Abram or Abraham. And so the new, the new age, the Jew says, all a bunch of bull, we don't want to hear all that crap about this new age stuff. Well, that's what God said, it's a new age, and his will is going to come on the earth, whether you like it or not, no matter what you say, that new age is coming. Why? Because it's God's will, not yours. He put the 12 signs of the zodiac into the heavens. That's what he says in the book of Job. I put the 12 signs of the, in the heavens, the 12 signs of the zodiac. Now, what are you going to do about it? It's my work in the heavens. I put it there. And so, therefore, today we are now, as I said, in the age of the two fish, which is the age of religion. And that's what we are today. That's all we are on this earth is religious. We don't have the faintest idea in the world how to spell spiritual or what that means. We are only religious. Well, that's what Pisces means. <clears throat> Two fish going in opposite directions. And that's what we are. Every, every religion is going in opposite directions. And so then in the book of Luke 12, Luke 10.22, I think it is, 10.22 of Luke, <clears throat> the scripture says that the twelve looked at Jesus. And they said, Master, since you're going to now die, and you've said that you're going to die, and you're going to leave the world, you know, you, you symbolize the two fish, so you are God's son. So we're saying symbolically to the son, we know that you're going to die now in the age of Pisces. So in Luke 22:10. It says in the Bible, they asked Jesus, where are we to go? Where are you going to go? Where, where are we going to go? What, what's going on here if you're going to die? And he said, go into the city. Luke twenty two ten. Go into the city and you will see a man carrying a water pitcher. Go into the house of the man with the water pitcher. That's the house of Aquarius. 
the man with the water pitcher. Now, to add to that, the fact that in the ancient world, in the Middle East, men never carried water ever, period. All the reference works and dictionaries, encyclopedias, and Bible reference works will tell you men would never carry a, a pail of water. That was a woman's job. And any man found or seen carrying a pitcher of water was was quickly chastised for that. That is a woman's job. You look you look like a fool carrying water. Don't you understand? That's a woman's job. So you look like a woman doing that. You you you, you betrayed your masculinity. Let the woman carry the water. Well, that's why Jesus always found the women at the well. <clears throat> look in the look in the history of the world. Women have always carried the water in, in Russia, and in Egypt today, and in all the Middle East. Women carry water, not men. Well, why did Jesus say, "Go into the city, and you will see a man carrying a pitcher of water"? Go into the house of the man with the water pitcher. Simple. Aquarius is a symbol of the house of the man with the water pitcher. The Bible is trying to tell you, but you are too ignorant, ill-informed, self-centered, unread, and downright ignorant to understand God's symbols are in heaven. This is why you have 12 signs of the zodiac, the 12 brothers of Joseph, the 12 stones on the breastplate of the high priest, the 12 this and the 12 that. Twelve is very important. It's still important today. We have twelve hours of light with God's Son. Then you have twelve hours with the Prince of Darkness. He's called Set in Egypt. That's why, because it gets dark at sunset. So once you understand sunset is the Prince of Darkness or Darth Vader, and uh, and and so it's twelve hours of darkness and twelve hours of light. The war between light and darkness. Jesus is God's son, the light of the world, and Set is the evil dark lord, uh, you know, God uh, the the devil who is the prince of darkness. So the bottom line at the end of the day is quite simply this: God's kingdom is the twelve signs of the zodiac. And just to God, just to Jesus' right hand at the at the uh, Last Supper, you will see a woman, long-haired woman. She represents Virgo, the virgin. This is why Jesus is said to have been born of a virgin. Goes back to uh, the the coming of spring, and spring was connected to Virgo, the virgin. So God's son is born of a virgin. All of these stories you hear about the about Jesus and Christianity, it's all zodiac. It's the twelve signs of the zodiac, the twelve brothers of Joseph, the twelve apostles. Wake up and understand for the first time, God's kingdom is the kingdom of animals in the the heavens. And you say, "Let your will be done." Well, I got news for you. It's going to be done, whether you like it or not. So you're just showing that you are proving of what's going to happen, whether you like it or not. So you say, let your kingdom come and let your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Well, yeah, well, right now it is in heaven. The, the constellation at the, uh, at the equator is uh, the, the two fish of Pisces. And so you're saying, well, let God's kingdom come and let the will, uh, the will of God, uh, the, the, the symbol of Pisces, let it dominate the earth and your will be done. Well, I got news for you. It's going to come and it's going to have its will done, period, because God put it there. So the bottom line is God's kingdom is the zodiac. Now, part two to this, equally important is that if you go into the dictionary or encyclopedias of history, go to the, uh, any one of the big encyclopedias of world history, there are all kinds of them, and look at the first century, A.A.D., the first century, uh, uh, you know, this is 2,000 years ago now, we're 2,018 years into the last of the, of the Piscean age. But 
Go back to the very first century and you will see that the Christians, what were Christians called? What was the term that the ancient Romans uh, called the Christians? That's interesting. When you go back into the Roman Empire and find out the term that Christians were called, they were referred to, and you'll see this if you do bother to do the research, you will see Christians were referred to in Rome. And all over the Roman Empire, Christians were called the followers of the way. W-A-Y. The followers of the way. And that's why Jesus said, I am the way, and the truth, and the light. I am the way, and the truth is uh, and, and the light, and I'm the one that enlightens you. Why? I enlighten you with the zodiac. I'm teaching you how the universe operates, the stars in the heaven. And so the, I looked that up in a dictionary, looked that up on the web. Christians call followers of the way. And then also look up in the dictionary on the web, the religion called, quote, the way, end quote. And you will find that the way was a term which was used by the ancient Greeks and the Phoenicians and Canaanites and all the people of the Middle East, they called the Zodiac the way because it was showing the way the sun moved through 12 signs of the Zodiac, which was in heaven. And so it was referred to as the way. The way is a term that is used in the ancient world for the Zodiac. Go and get a dictionary and look up the word the way, end quote. And it will tell you that was a symbol for the a word that was used for the zodiac. And Jesus said, I am the way. And then if you go to Jeremiah 6.16, where God is talking to the people, and it says, Thus saith the Lord, stand you in the way, and see and ask for the old path, which is the old way. And walk therein, and you shall find rest for your soul. But they have said, no, we will not walk in the way, end quote. Another Bible uh, translation says, thus saith the Lord, stand by the roads and look, ask for the ancient path, ask for the way, and where, where the good way is, and then walk in the ancient way. Go back to the old way for your souls. But the people said, no, we will not walk in the way. And so today, the people are not walking in the way. Jesus said, I am the way. Jesus is the son. He's administering the earth and life on the earth through his 12 signs of the zodiac, the 12 months of the year. So the bottom line is astrology is God's way. And you have better think about it before you condemn something, before you condemn it and say it's Luciferian or it's of the devil. You better go back and do your homework because the Bible says God told Peter, you stop calling down evil upon the things which I have created. Peter was always finding fault with different peoples and different ideas and different creation. And God says, you stop calling down evil upon what I have created. In other words, go back and do your homework, airhead, and find out what you're talking about before you go cursing God with your mouth. Because one day you may have to, uh, you may have to uh, you know, deal with that. And the next, when you leave this world, you may have to deal with something you don't even know is going on in the universe. And it's called the way. Jesus said, I am the way. Look it up in a dictionary. Quote, the way, end quote. So the bottom line, I'm telling you, God's kingdom is the zodiac, the way. And Jesus is the son, and he said, I am the way. Why? Because the, the 12 signs of the zodiac are in relation to the path of the sun around the year. And so the path of the sun was called the way. Why? Because it goes through 12 signs. So the bottom line is for all Christians and all people who love God, you better go back and do your homework because you are worshiping the wrong God. You are, If you're a Catholic, you're worshiping Dagon. D-A-G-O-N. Dagon. 
If you're Protestant, you're worshiping Dagon, but you're also worshiping Zeus. So Zeus is the god of the Bible. Today, the Old Testament is the Bible Testament about Zeus, the god Zeus. And you go back and look in Job, and you will see that Job was worshiping the god Zeus. And the ancient peoples that, that are in the Old Testament were worshipers of God Zeus. The whole Middle East was worshiping the god Zeus. Zeus and Latin becomes Deus, D-E-U-S. Instead of uh, Zeus, Z-E-U-S, it's D-E-U-S. Zeus is Deus and, and Latin. And Deus and Latin becomes God. So today, when you're seeing the Catholic Church is worshiping God, Dios, no, they're worshiping Zeus. And Zeus is connected to the worship of Dagon, D-A-G-O-N, Dagon. This is why your religion, Christianity, Judaism, Islam are all killing each other. They're all filled with lies, pornography, you know, child sacrifice, murder, violence, drug addiction, the world of mankind is lying in the power of a demon, of devils. The religions of this world are demonic depravity. Mm. And people are too arrogant, self-centered, egotistical, and do not want to admit that they have spent their whole life worshiping demonic demons and devils. And today we're seeing it all occurring all around the world. Violence, bloodshed, and the people of the earth are not totally stupid. They know something is wrong, and they know it. So they have to turn to alcoholism, drinking, drugs, to violent sports, to sex, drugs, music, making money, entertaining themselves, because they know, spiritually speaking, the world we live in has lost its way. There is no God. There is no spirituality there is nothing now but what we have created for ourselves, a religion. And when one person gets stuck on, on, on an idea that's, that's ludicrous, but people get stuck on these uh, illusions, we call it insanity. But when a whole nation gets stuck on an illusion, we call it religion. So the bottom line is that our religions have been given to us by the same people who gave us our educational institutions, our banking our insurance companies, our governmental system, and who have put together our military-industrial complex and control the earth through communication, through words and terms, and give us our, our laws and our court system, and they also give you your religion. Wake up. The entire world is lost, and it's not going to get any better because you're worshiping the wrong gods. It's an incredible story about how mankind is self-centered, egotistical, and will not, and refuses, and will not accept the fact that they have made a mistake. They have screwed up and made a mistake, and that's why the whole entire world today is at war with each other. Right. Families are breaking up. You know, marriages are being broken up. The children are on drugs. The children are leaving home. The kids are violent, end up in biker gangs and, and street violence and drug addiction and wars and crime. The whole system of the earth is corrupt. And the reason why is because we're self-centered, egotistical, and too ignorant to figure out the mundane truth that God says the back in Jeremiah 6, go back to the old way. So that's the bottom line. Astrology is God's kingdom, period. Now, what's uh, really fascinating about this to me is, you know, first of all, I, I already know I'm going to get the uh, rather angry messages that come along with this discussion, Jordan, because uh, to try and say this, there are people that will immediately say that you are, you know, luciferian yep. and you're anti-christian <laughs> and you're part yep. of the uh part of the evil not just you but me too don't worry uh yep. it'll be both of us uh so you know what i find interesting is the following two things first of all i see a recurring concept that um this idea of what is above will also be below and what you find to be true below will also be held above that kind of worries me 
considering the yeah. uh, the twisted way with which people think they're speaking to a god. Uh, yep. they're, they're, they're talking to the wrong guy, first of all. And uh, secondly, I don't think they have any concept of what they're speaking to. The next thing is, I always find it interesting that people get angry at the discussion of astrology or the astrological symbols that are contained quite clearly, I mean extremely blatantly, in the biblical text that they claim to uh, to adhere to. It's right there in front of them. It tells yep. them different things. I mean, bluntly, some things you gotta, you know, you gotta think your way through and then you see it, uh, you know, the seasons and things like that. I get it. But some of these things are right there. <laughs> there, there's no well, denying. Let me, yeah, let me throw, uh, let me throw this in. The Apostle Paul, when trying to teach the, the people of his day, the Christians of his day, they thought about him the way a lot of people think about you and me. And he said to them in the scriptures, Have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Is that what's happening? If I am here to tell you the truth, and I am now your enemy because I tell you the truth? I mean, we now know that uh, the one thing that most people don't want to hear, they want to hear all kinds of things. But the one thing people, generally speaking, have never wanted to hear, and they're not interested to hear today, generally speaking, is the truth. People don't want to hear the truth. They even put it in movies. You know, you can't handle the truth. Well, the idea is that's true. That is a correct understanding of the history of mankind. People turn away from the truth. They don't, don't want to see that they're alcoholics. They don't want to admit it. They don't want to even go near it. They don't, if they're all strung out on drugs, they don't want to talk about the fact that they're a drug addict. They don't want to admit it. They don't want to see it. And people, you know, they're, they're, if they are in business with other people who are criminals, they don't want to see it. They don't want to know what their husband's really doing, what their wife is actually doing. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear that their son or their daughter are prostituting themselves or are selling drugs. Families don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear the truth because you can't handle the truth. Well, and, and so and I also understand violence, that. Jordan, violence is another thing that you don't often mention, but I, I, I think is bears mentioning right here. Uh, and I know you understand this, but you, you know, it's probably one of those things you skip because it should be so obvious to everybody. But violence is something that people are constantly signing off on, supporting. You know, you're waving your flag, right? You gotta support this and that action. You gotta support the war. You gotta support the, the action of the state, which is killing people, which is literally committing violence against individuals whom you will never get to see you will never see reported on in the news and yet people sign off on these things continuously because you know and some of them don't even claim to have a god and they say i'm an atheist and they're lying too because basically they've adopted the state as their god and there's plenty of uh, symbols in That's the state exactly itself right. so you know what uh, the reality is people are signing off on violence all the time being completely disconnected and having it sanitized in their own lives or turned into something which is just what a spectacle for entertainment like you said you know why do people enjoy the most violent of sports why do people enjoy you know movies where there's death and destruction and horrendous things going on because this at least in this way they're sort of experiencing secondhand the reports of violence but the truth is people are signing off on violent activity murder and mayhem across the planet one way or another and they do it continuously and and to me, the idea, the lessons, the uh, the concept of being, you know, and I'm going to hold up air quotes here, Christ-like, has nothing to do with being violent, oppressive, uh, taking advantage of, raping, destroying cultures, destroying uh, uh, people just in general. But I mean, destroying everything, uh, even even the wanton destruction of the animal kingdom and a great many things on the planet altogether. People sign off on constantly with their own actions and their own rhetoric, whether they want to accept it or not. Well, like you said, can they handle the truth? Not really. And nobody wants to handle it because it's a little too hot. That's what That's the bottom right. line is, right? That's precisely the bottom line. Is the people don't want to admit the truth. They've heard they, that people want to hear what they want to hear. They don't want to hear what they don't want to hear. So if you're going to be a success in this world and buy jet planes and fly all over the world and vacation 90% of your life away, vacationing on the Riviera and you want to live a high life, 
and get into religion, like Charles, like uh, like uh, what's his name, uh, who founded the Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard. L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah. So if you really want to be wealthy and you want to be a powerful man in this world, you know, start a religion, because people love love stories. And uh, and Rodney Dangerfield said something I thought was really clever. He said, uh, faith, he said, I learned about faith when I was a kid. And he said, faith is that wonderful quality. What is faith? He said, that's that wonderful quality that allows you to believe something that you know is bullshit. But you believe it anyway because of faith. Then I come to find out, no, you really don't even understand what the word faith means. It's an ancient Greek word, and it doesn't mean what you think it means at all. It has nothing to do with what you, as a Christian, call faith. What you call faith is hoping for something. You're hoping and you're praying that something will happen. You're hoping and you're praying you're hoping. That's not faith. The word faith is a Greek word, which means basically when you get up in the morning, when you wake up, you put your feet on the floor without looking at the floor. That is what an act of, in, in the Greek word is faith meaning you put your foot on the floor without looking to see if there was a floor. Why? Because it's always been there. I mean, every morning of your life, the floor is there. So it's always been there. So why even think about it? You just get up and do whatever you're going to do and don't even think about the floor. Well, that's what the word faith means in Greek. It means get up and do whatever your heart tells you to do, whatever your spirit wants you to do. Just get up and go do it. Because God has always been there. And God will always be there when you, before your great-grandmother was born and, before, and after you die. That divine presence that we call God has always been here for the millions of years that will be here for millions of years so you don't have to worry about looking to see if God's here just get up and go do whatever the spirit tells you to do whatever it is and if it's and if it's right then it'll be it'll be uh, successful and if it's not it won't be successful but you have faith in other words just get up and do what you think you should do and that's it and so that's why we have the story of Jesus walking on water right and if you remember in the story in the Bible, it says that there were a few apostles and they were all fishermen and they were in a boat and Peter was in the boat with them and they saw Jesus coming, walking toward them on water. And it says, and in the Bible, it says <clears throat> Peter saw it was Jesus. And he's walking on water. So he got out and he jumped out the boat and he walked on water. And it says, and Peter was walking on water, doing just fine. He's walking on water, walking toward Jesus. And Jesus is walking on the water toward him. And then it says, and then he looked down. The scripture says, uh, Peter looked down and saw and realized he's walking on water. And you can't do that. Well, he was. He was walking on water until he looked down and saw he was walking on walking on water, then he began to slip. He began to, to slide into the water. He began, why? And Jesus said, you of little faith. When you have faith, you just got up and come walking toward me, and you were walking on water. But now that you think about it, now that you're looking at what you're doing, you're thinking about it, now you're questioning the integrity and the intelligence of doing something, now you're starting to slide in. Now you're reaching out to me to help you and to save your life because you're going to drown. Why? Because you've lost your faith. Faith mm. means just get up and do what you want to period. Because whatever you do, that was God's will anyway. Well, see, and so now, whatever it is, uh, and, and, and then if you want to understand correctly what you should do and not do, then go to the Zodiac. And find out who you are, what sign you were born under. And then there's a lot of misunderstanding in the zodiac today. A lot of misunderstanding. Well, see, now th this but, is the this is the interesting thing too, Jordan, because we're coming down to where we're going to be left with about ten minutes. So I don't want to yep. go too too much further into anything else because we won't have time for it. We're obviously going to continue to part five next week. But uh, something that has always occurred to me, and I, I throw it out to you because I, I think this is a, a way to look at it. I, I know I'm going to get the whole Luciferian thing, and you're on the wrong side here, you know. Uh, you and me both, don't worry. 
uh, it, it'll be any of us and anybody who believes what we have to say is also, you know, cursed in one way or another, according to them. Um, what's fascinating to me is the question I always pose to people when they come at me with this, which is, you know, if you think that uh, God, that what you call God, has created all things, um, does that not also mean that uh, he or it has created all of this wonderful, you know, th- th- this wonderful system of stars, which has moved and continued to move throughout the centuries, throughout generations, like clockwork, which can be measured, which can be observed, seems to me as though this was a properly formed mechanism by an intelligence. Uh, you know, just looking at it objectively, number one. Number two, the idea that uh, that a whole lot of things are not divinely inspired also bothers me. Because to me, if you create a piece of art which is, you know, uh, uh, pleasant, is a good thing for people, one way or another, is inspiring, is, you know, just aesthetically wonderful or a great representation of something else. Um, and you are a being which was created by the creator. I mean, in a way, is not all actions of men that are here to be positive and all actions of all animals and the plants and everything. I mean, isn't it all? God's will that this is the way it goes, even the things which maybe are not necessarily positive, uh, maybe they've been placed there as challenges, right? Well, creator of all things says. is the creator of all things. I mean, wh- what do you think? <clears throat> Look at, that's what the scripture says in Isaiah. One, one comes to my mind right now in the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament. God says, I am the guy who creates all things. I create the living, I create the dead. I cause I cause people to die, I cause people to be born. I cause good, I cause evil. I create peace, I create war. I do it all, period, end of sentence. I am God and I do it all. That's what it says in Isaiah. I have done everything myself. The good, the evil, the dark, the sexual, all of this is in me. It's all part of what I have designed in the universe. Period. So have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Yes. And so there's a whole uh, there's a whole another story that we need to go into into another time. We'll talk about we I got to finish on Moses. There's a whole lot more we didn't talk about with Moses yet. We can do that another time. Oh yes, well, uh, no, I definitely want to go more into Moses for sure, uh, because I, I I know that I, I got stuck on a little part there because it was just amazing to me, and then when I went and I looked and actually researched what it was you were saying, uh, makes a lot more sense. Again, you know what? I, I advise anybody listening to this. That if something on here sounds like, you know, Jordan's making something up, it's very crazy. Uh, Chuck has said something here, or added something in that just sounds like he's, you know, just saying things to hear himself talk. Do me a favor and try and research what it is we're saying here, what it is Jordan is presenting, because you will find that there is a very good reason behind what he's saying. And if you dig deep enough... You may find that, uh, yes, indeed, Jordan Maxwell is only your enemy in that he's telling you the truth in a world that really does not want to accept it. Now, why doesn't this world want to accept it? doesn't seem as though it's being ruled by anything benevolent at the moment. So, therefore, right. telling the truth and being someone who is attempting to educate others, well, not exactly something that uh, is uh, encouraged, let's say, today. Yeah, well, but if, if you'll remember, Jesus said that uh, your enemies will be those of your own household. That's a scripture in the Bible, the New Testament, where Jesus said the man's enemies will be those of his own household, his own friends, his own family, his own brother, his own sister, his, his own mother. These will be your enemies, the people who are in the dark, and I have come to bring light into the world, and light means intellectual intelligence, enlightenment, and the people are in the dark, and they don't want to see the light. They they are not interested. So Jesus said, if they had listened to me, they would listen to you. So the slave is no greater than his master. What they have done to me, they will do to you. So therefore, if you mm-hmm. want to take on the life that Jesus lived and live like him, then go around telling people the truth and see far and see how far you're going to get. See how much money you're going to make. See how many times people are going to hire you. 
and 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 support you. Yeah, give it a try. Watch and see how many people are going to support you. Out of a hundred people, there might be two that will actually see what you're saying and get the sense of it. Because Jesus said, "You have eyes, but you don't see. You listen with your ears, but you don't hear, and with your heart, you don't get the sense of it." So if if, if the people had listened to me, they would listen to you. So they haven't, and like he said, and the slave is no greater than the master. What they've done to me, they'll do to you. So when you read all the stuff where they nail me to a cross and spit on me and mock me to my face and threw a, and nail me on a cross, yeah, well, that's what's coming to you, son. You're going to get it too. Why? Because the people can't handle the truth. They don't want the truth. Mm. Well, that's the bottom line. No, that that is the bottom line, and you know they they always. It's not just based on a royal story uh, uh, that you know people ascribe it to, because you know the the concept of killing the messenger. Uh, th- this is what they generally do, one way or another, <laughs> and uh, it, it's either done directly or indirectly. But that we'll have to get into, along with the uh, expanded story of Moses and quite a few more uh, bits of what. You need to know here in order to understand religion as it stands uh, yep. in this continuing series with Jordan Maxwell. In the meantime, if you go to jordanmaxwellshow.com, now you do have to put all that together, jordanmaxwellshow.com. That is the only website that is Jordan Maxwell's, by the way, and it's the only one that he's affiliated with. You go there and you can click on something called the Research Society website and you can join up and there is a great deal of material in there. Uh, again, some of which you've actually heard discussed on this show. Uh, not directly. I didn't, you know, to give you links or anything like that because you have to join. Um, and, uh, it's actually not that expensive to join. It's, uh, and it's a, a very, very in-depth look at uh, some interesting images, materials, uh, reading material. I think you have some books on there. You have some uh, stuff that is I not videos. out. I, I mm-hmm. have videos, audios, books, free e-books, a tremendous, uh, uh, important books that you can't find anywhere, but I found them in their e-books. I'll put them on there for free e-books that are dealing with the subjects that I deal with. All you got to do is click on it, and it downloads the whole book for you. And, uh, and so I, I, I try and put all of this together, but I only have one webmaster, one man, and he is excellent. He's a tremendous uh, asset to me. And, but I've got like five, I got five terabytes, which is 5,000 gigs of stuff yet to put on my website. Uh, you know, he's one man. He can only do so much per day. But every day, as often as possible as he can, he puts new stuff on, and it's already an enormous amount of documents, audio, video, words, terms, symbols, what they mean, where all these religious ideas have come from, with documents and pictures. It's an incredible array of my work that I have spent my life doing. And all you got to do is one time, just a one-time donation for a life. Uh, you know, it's, it's for life, a one-time donation for, and that takes care of it forever. So, right, and, if and you really want to know, well, the the, the interesting like, thing I want to tell people something right now is about the subject matter tonight. Uh, if you were to go into just the section that I referenced earlier and uh, uh, go into hidden stuff in religion, okay, just that section, we've gone through enough material to cover maybe four out of the existing eighteen pages. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. In in the four parts now, eight hours of discussion on this show, we've maybe gone through four pages of what he has eighteen pages of in that section. That's not the only section. And there's more right. being added all the time. Like you said, your webmaster is right. working as best he can. Uh obviously, you know, the, these things I understand too. I run a website too. It's it's not easy to get done. There's a lot of material on here, and it's all very valuable. But begin by going to jordanmaxwellshow.com. That is uh, that is where you begin the research society for the deeper dives into the information, obviously. Uh, and I urge you guys to support Jordan in any way you can. Um, he has uh, 
graciously done this now for four episodes. We're going to go for episode five next Monday. And uh, there is no telling how long this will take. But uh, when Jordan says we've gotten done with it, that's when we're going to be done with it. And uh, I, I'm trying to minimize the amount of interruption. But uh, but at the same time, I, I feel it necessary to enter the the uh, feedback I'm getting from you guys, uh, questions that I think need to be answered, and also to try and uh, um, you know just provide Jordan with a with a place to jump off every now and then, also a chance to breathe and take a drink once in a while. That helps. Uh, but uh, sure the, the the thing is, I'm just trying to uh, facilitate this uh, for you guys, and uh, also because uh, Jordan thought this would be a great great series to do and i'm extremely happy and proud to be doing this with him uh and i hope you guys are getting a lot out of it but if you go to jordan maxwell show.com and get into the research society there is an entire world of information to get into that uh a lot of it is jordan's a lot of it is uh information which he has collected from others which he finds extremely important but either way all valuable resources and jordan himself is a valuable resource as i said before so jordan without any further ado i'd like to give you the final word on tonight but uh i think this is an excellent place to stop off and again we might have to begin with a deeper dive into the story of moses next week or some other subject areas i'm not sure but uh when you start talking about astrology and the relation to the reality of the biblical story and of all the stories that we've been told and have been uh dissuaded from studying deeply uh that in and of itself is a subset of uh <laughs> shows we That's could right. do so you know by all means i give you the final word for tonight well, I thank you for allowing me to be on and, and understand. I have a very high uh, respect for what we call God or, or the spirit world. I have a very definite respect and admiration for the universe and for the universal uh, laws that our, our, you know, our life on the earth uh, implies that there is a highly intelligent creator and of that I have no doubt and I have the highest respect for that creator and for the things that that one has created. So I am not against religion. I'm not against God. I'm not against religion or spirituality. I'm, a, I'm an author and a lecturer and a teacher on the history of the world we live in. So I love the idea of God. I'm just trying to explain to you that men have used that subject to mislead you, and that's what I'm trying to do is wake you up to the real truth of the life you really live. That's all I'm trying to do is educate you. And if, if and that's why the scripture says, Jesus said, if they had listened to me, they would listen to you. Right. So, I mean, and, and obviously the only, the only thing you'd like to, uh, you know, discourage people from doing is being misled or manipulated. Uh, That's right. You certainly have no desire to and uh, don't wish to dispossess anybody of the concept of the creator or God as it can be understood or as he can be understood, depending on how you look at it. You don't want to do that in any way. What you want no. to do, though, is let people see how that particular desire, which is... Uh, prominent among many societies many individuals across the world has been turned against them by uh by those who have uh who have hijacked this and created well right. these organizations in order to control people with a uh a true desire to want to be well you know close to in contact with and in adherence with their creator uh and and this is uh I'm just I'm yeah. just trying to point people in the right direction because obviously if you think about it the human race has been going in the wrong direction for many centuries and we're now coming to a point where we are seriously in trouble our earth is in trouble our human race is in trouble the whole world is in trouble and so I'm trying to you know, be heard to tell people you're going in the wrong direction You've been deceived. You know the banks are de deceptive. You know government's deceptive. You know the military is deceptive. You know lies and corruption are everywhere. You know that, and I know that. But also the most important part is your spiritual life. You want to talk about God? Yeah, there's a lot of corruption there. You need to go back and do some homework and find out what God is really all about. And that's what I'm trying to do.